Mother Teresa said, I am but a pencil in the hand of God. Just a pencil in the hand of God. How beautiful that is. But isn't that true for each and every one of us? That we are an expression of spirit. That's why we're here. That's why we're born. We are here to be the outlet, the vehicle for light, for love, for goodness to shine through. But because of this free will thing, God doesn't argue because we've got to discover that for ourselves. So we are this pencil to let spirit flow through us. But Meister Eckhart, the beautiful 13th century German mystic said, only the hand that erases, only the hand that erases can write the true words, the words of truth. And I think learning from fear, the topic for today, is about being aware and learning what we need to erase in these old canogans of ours, these old human minds of ours, what we need to let go of and erase so we can truly be that vessel and vehicle of spirit. This is a quote from another one of my beautiful wisdom leaders and teachers at this time, Brené Brown. She said, the dark does not destroy the light. It defines it. It's our fear of the dark that casts our joy into the shadows. Faith is a place of mystery where we find the courage to believe in what we cannot see. Very much what Marianne was talking about this morning, what we cannot see and the strength to let go of our fear of uncertainty. And isn't that where most of our fears are developing right now is our fear of uncertainty? You know, our true self is that divine little spark of goodness and light and love and possibility and uh, abundance that resides within us. It's that little spark. It's that universal reality that's part of all of us. It's, it's in everyone and everything. It's there right now. And it's the allness of life, the goodness of life that's already here. But again, on this journey of self-discovery, we can cover that up when we use that human mind to separate ourselves from that goodness. And in this process of learning, we do separate ourselves because we want to learn about life. It's the darkness defines it. We have to know what we can compare the light, the love, the goodness, the abundance to. So we can limit that flow of goodness. We can limit it, but the problem is when we limit that goodness is when we get in fear because we feel separate and insecure and alone and there's only so much good to go around and not enough of this. And we start building this self-imposed prison of fear that locks us and strangles us and all these things we become afraid of. But unless we're aware, not only of the things we're afraid of, but there's something greater that's always there around us and in us, how are we going to use that eraser? How are we going to erase the words of untruth, the words of error that we have planted here, that we're alone and separate and not good enough and insecure, and there's only so much good to go around? How are we going to erase those things unless we're aware of them? Remember, God doesn't argue, so we can do whatever we want writing this story of our life. And it can be a flow of infinite possibilities, of goodness, of joy, of seeing where, where am I needed? How can I serve? But first and foremost, we have to learn from the fear that's keeping us stuck. As Rumi said, my beautiful 13th century mystic Sufi, he said, why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? Well, we stay in prison because we're looking at the bars instead of turning around and seeing all the possibilities that are there. We stay stuck in our focus. Do you know that fear and faith use the identical energy, the same energy, the one power. You were talking about that again, Mary, and the one power, there's only one power. Fear and faith use that same identical energy. The only difference is the direction of focus. 
We can either be focused on the limitations of this human world, which we might label right now as a worldwide pandemic, as violence, unrest, racial discrimination and problems, uh, polarized, just polarized thought processes. Now, we could define it as many things, but if we look in the other direction, we can see, oh, life is calling us to show up in a new way, to let go of the fear that we can label as limiting our lives. You know, I had a dear friend this week, because one of the things we need to do, number one, I would say, is confess recognize and confess what we're afraid of. You know, if we're not willing to look at that, how in the world are we going to know something better? How are we going to let our joy get out of the shadow if we don't recognize the shadow that's covering it? We have to be able to look at what's bothering us and scaring us so we can see something more. Something more is always available. But when we get so weighted down in our human mind, we can forget. It's the contemplative mind that keeps us plugged into spirit and touches that spark, that divine spark within us. It's the contemplative mind, the higher mind that knows that. So when we talk to somebody, when we find a friend, a spiritual counselor, a practitioner, to talk to someone who's calm and confident that we can be honest with, that can reflect back to us the truth. I thought this week when I was preparing learning from fear, I thought, well, I have some fear that I don't know if I'm learning from right now. So I talked to a dear friend, uh, a beautiful theologian that uh, helps me regularly, and I explained to him what I was afraid of. And good, good listeners and good practitioners and good uh, friends will listen to you and give you the, a reason why you could think of something bigger and better. And he said to me, well, could you have faith in this? Boy, could I feel the difference of holding on to this fear. It was like being choked. You know what I'm talking about? That fear that just gets a grip on you and holds you really tight. And then opening up and going, I can have faith in that because faith pulls us into a much greater energy, a much greater arena of understanding and how beautiful it is to be able to open up to that. You know, I think one of the problems, one of the hardships for me any right way right now is when we like to be in groups, we love our community. And we, when we can't be all together and hug and be together and share ideas, it's darn hard. And a fear can creep in. When are we going to get back to this? What's going to happen? What's so we have to take little baby steps. And I know Kirk and I haven't been going out too much, but this, the Mission Viejo Mall opened this week, and I needed a new battery for my watch. And so we went that first day, and of course no one's there, which was kind of convenient for us, but we went and we had lunch on the patio out of the Cheesecake Factory, and we forgot what it's like. And you know, when we're home, we either are exhausted, or we're talking about work, or we're doing something else, or taking care of this, or doing something. But to be at a place where you can just be with somebody and talk, it was beautiful for us. And then you start seeing goodness around you. And we noticed, a, I think it was a grandson and his, his granddad came in and sat, you know, distancing away from us. And the granddad had a hat on that said World War II vet. And it was really quite touching because the interaction, you couldn't hear them too well, but the interaction was absolutely beautiful between them. And there was a table of two people that were sitting a little further, and as they were leaving, we could see uh, them come up to the grandfather and say, thank you for your service. And that was just a beautiful reminder of the love and goodness that's happening, but it didn't end there. Kirk was watching as the grandson got the bill and was paying it, and he goes, ah. Oh. Granddad, you're my good luck charm. Those beautiful people just paid for our lunch. You know, that's the contemplative mind I'm talking about. When we take time to move away from the busyness and the hectic, the hectic, whatever that word is, and we move away from all that and um, focusing on our problems and what we don't have, there's goodness everywhere. 
we have to just clear the space. We have to erase all those other things that are filling our mind all the time that we can see the beauty that's unfolding right here and right now. So first of all is understanding and confessing. Finding a place to, writing it down in your journal. Yeah, I'm afraid of this. We have to understand that there's something we're afraid of. Because remember, it's the same energy. And until we learn to focus and reuse the energy in a better way, it's just going to be taking up the space. So we confess it, and then we need to look at it. Well, why, why am I so afraid? Where, where did this fear come from? Why has it all got such a big hold on me? Because if we're moving towards faith, we can't have faith in something we, that we don't believe in a little bit. And if we're hanging on so hard to this fear, this is all there is, this is the only thing that's going to be, we're not going to be able to get to faith. We have to loosen up all that worry and doubt and anxiety because fear, oh my gosh, we have to remember this fear, if we're holding on to it so tight, it's contagious. We cannot, it's like a mental germ and we can spread it around with other people when we start talking about it. When we listen to the news too much, we can see it. We can catch the fear of the news if we're watching too a lot. We can catch it. We also, it's not just contagious in this realm, we can catch the fear of all the accumulated doubts and worries from the past and bring it in today if we're not careful. We have to be really, really aware right now of what we're doing and understand it. You know, I don't know, how many of you have heard of Byron Katie? Byron Katie came to uh, our, our center in San Juan and she's, what a kicky, oh she was just really kicky and really fun. I mean, she has this work of self -inquiry. Inquiry. Now, hers, hers is more from a psychological standpoint, but you can turn it into a spiritual standpoint, too. I mean, she just, this, her work, as she called it, this, this four questions, the four questions of um, self-inquiry, really changed her life. And she makes sure when she's working with pe people, she works, she works you hard. It's called the work. And that's for us with our fears. It's the work. We don't want to sit down and, and talk about that. We don't want to admit it. That's not a very spiritual thing to do. Well, actually, it's a very spiritual thing to do. And first thing Byron Katie said, well, what are you afraid of? What's bothering you? What's your concern? And then the first question, is it true? Is our fear true? Is it really something that's true? Are we making it up? And are you absolutely certain it's true? And then she asked those two questions. What do you feel like when you hold on to that belief? And I bet, like this. How do you feel when you let it go? How do you feel when you let that fear go and open up to new possibilities when you erase it? And then she has after that, you have to do a turnaround, which is like an affirmation. And she does it in one way. But for us, if we had a fear of something, what would the, what would the turnaround, the exact opposite of fear be? Faith. I have faith in something greater. I have faith in something more. We don't have to know what it is right now, but we have faith in something greater. And when we turn that fear around and turn it into faith, it will change our mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual opening that we can let God and life and love flow through us. But we have to erase the things that keep us stuck. Is it work? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Can we do it? Yes. And we're in it together. That's why we are here right now. When I read that I'll quote from Pema Chodron in the beginning, that we are needed right now to do spirit's work, to do God's work, to do love's work. The Bible told us, John in the Bible, love casts out all fear. So if we can replace all of that cruddy stuff that we've accumulated from who knows where and focus on what we love and what is good and the truth. That young boy speaking to his grandfather is still with me. Those things, remember that thing I wrote down? It's still with me. Because goodness lasts. It's even more potent. It's even more potent than the fears we hang on to. We just need to be available to let that be, to let it go, to let it happen. 
You know, you and I can get very lost in this world of physicality. It can be very seductive at times. It pulls us into these things, and we start questioning life. Ernest Holmes talks about in his uh, Science of Mind textbook the parable of an angel who comes to earth. The angel who comes from peace and beauty and joy comes down just to visit earth, and he gets caught up in listening to human problems in a pandemic, financial stress, there's only so much good to go around, people being violent and mean, man, inhumanity to man, and he starts, his light starts to fade. It starts to fade and he forgets who he is. And he spends years living in unhappiness and worry and anxiety because he forgets who he is. But in him, there's that little divine spark, that determination where he, he remembers, no, there's something more than this. And he starts to let that little bit of determination turn into a great light of hope. And the hope shakes him awake. And he remembers, I came from beauty and love and abundance and kindness and light. I came from there. And he starts remembering and he goes, oh my gosh, I have just been part of a very, very, very bad dream. And I'm waking up. It's time for us to wake up too and remember we're all children of God. We're all beings of light and messengers of good. That's why we're here right now. And so my call to us in this time is to really hang on to faith. That contemplative mind can be built every day, reinforced with consistent practice. You can get it from spiritual reading and prayer. You can get it from meditation. You can get it from beautiful, good works in the world. You can get it from being in nature and remembering, seeing God's presence, the awe of good. We need to be consistent in that contemplative practice and process. Ah, so we can be the free and open vessel, the pencil to write God's message of love and goodness and faith. So today, and I'm going to get our band ready too, because we're going to end this. And we want to, I want to be strong in this. There's no, no, maybe so. We got to let go of this. We got to get our eraser out and start erasing. We got to be open vessels for good. And so just, and in your own mind at heart, because we have these masks on, and if you're home, whatever you're doing, I just want you to repeat after me because it's so important. I stand in faith. I turn my limitation into possibility, my fear into faith, my anger into love, and the God in me sees the God, the love, the goodness in everyone else everywhere. I live my faith. The energy of faith and love and goodness. Are you with me? The answer is yes. Okay, good. I just want to say I see that activated faith within each and every one of you. I know as you leave today, you do so powered up by spirit. You can see beyond any fear to see the faith and goodness that's possible. I know it. I see it for each and every one. And let's just close up by saying together, and so it is. It is done. 